I think there's an important role for science and the, those who are involved with the executive committee are for the Warsaw International Mechanism and others in the policy space around loss and damage. They're really interested in calling for more information from researchers in general. Um, and when attending some of these meetings, people have been talking a lot about kind of gaps in information and they have already put out calls for information but I think that it's great that you're starting this discussion about how scientists can contribute because it's it's quite hard as a scientist to be aware of what's going on in this policy space and those calls for information may always may sometimes be in a different kind of language so for example there was a call coming out on slow onset events um, which in the UNFCCC language means sea level rise, glacial retreat, uh, ocean acidification, desertification, and perhaps the people who are experts in those areas may not um, even realize that they're doing work that's relevant. The loss and damage concept here is still relatively ambiguous, especially from a um, uh, scientific perspective right so in order to get agreement in policy they have to be quite vague and so we entered this kind of policy space a couple of years ago and were saying like okay we're climate scientists how can we help but um, it's not really that straightforward because there are so many different perspectives on loss and damage and now we've been doing social science research to try to understand what does loss and damage mean for different people and I think that for those different people, perhaps there are different research questions. So for some people, they feel that adaptation and mitigation is enough to prevent loss and damage from climate change. And for those people, perhaps there aren't new research questions. We should just be focusing on the research to improve mitigation, improve adaptation. For other people, they say that adaptation and mitigation are not gonna be enough and that there will be loss and damage. It's unavoidable and it, and it could be in, so, in some places that will be permanent um, and irreversible. And so for them, I think there are new science questions emerging um, and they're quite interdisciplinary, right? So um, where do the break points come? Where is there a limit to adaptation? Um, and there are a lot of questions here, for example, around migration. So are there um, places where the climate change impacts will become so great that their adaptation strategy fails and they need to look to new livelihoods um, and, or, or perhaps migration and resettlement? And if we can, as a climate science community, try to, try to work with others to anticipate those breakpoints, that could um, ameliorate some of the losses that, that would be experienced.